If this watch was good enough for a former secret CIA agent, then it's gotta be good enough for us, right? Welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Channel, where we do watch reviews a little differently. And today we're talking about Casio! Specifically, G-Shocks. Now I came very, very late to the party when it comes to G-Shocks. G-Shocks to me were huge, showy, bulky mother lovers that looked more like weapons on the wrist than a time device. But that all changed when I bought myself a DW5610. The beautiful, original, square G-Shock that actually isn't that bulky on my small six and a half inch wrist. And you know, I was quite content to own just one of these G-Shocks and give the rest to someone else. Anyway, as the days and the weeks rolled by, I kept seeing another iconic G-Shock shape and it was time to investigate. <laughs> Now that beautiful G-Shock Square came out in 83 and it wasn't until 1987 that we saw a circular G-Shock in the 5700. Then in 1992, we had another circular G-Shock in the 5900. Notice those triple dials at the top of the screen. Then in 1994, we had the 6600, which gave us that lovely big light button at the front of the watch. And then in 1995, all those elements and influences came together to give us this design the 6900. Oh, this watch has been in so many movies, but most noticeably on the wrist of Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 2. In the first movie, Tom wore a DW290, not a G-Shock, but a very bulky mother lover, which I absolutely adore. So it was inevitable and only natural that I would get a 6900 to review and wear. Now you can still buy the original DW6900, the same colors and the same text on Amazon for about 50 pounds. And for a proposition to buy a watch to make me think of the 90s, I just had to get one. Are you G-Shock ready? Let's go! So here it is, the DW6900-1V, the original, the iconic. This design is one of the most popular ones G-Shock has ever made. And I have to say this watch is far better in person than it is in pictures. On first impressions, yes, it is a big watch and it looks a little bit bigger than my square. And it also somehow, don't know why, but it reminds me of a Transformers face. A little bit Optimus Primey, you know, with the shield guard over the mouth bit, you know what I mean? Like most Casios, the instruction manual is actually on the watch, telling you what every button does with every single function. Sometimes it's OTD, but I think here it's perfect. I love the pop of red of G-Shock on the front of the case. And I'm just taking in the design of the actual case because it is beautiful. Beautifully protective, that is. It's almost like crown guards on the three o'clock and the nine o'clock, isn't it? Protecting the pushers, which let's be frank, probably wouldn't matter if you bumped those anyway. As I said, I'm really taken by the colors on this watch. There's golds, there's whites, there's blues. The same sort of colors that's on my F91W that I love and all the other retro watches in my collection. 200 meter water resistant, which is amazing. And can take a pounding. The watch is nicknamed the third eye. For obvious reasons, we've got three little sub dial registers at the top of the screen. They literally just function as a second timer, which for some might seem a little pointless as it's really just for show. But to me, it's so cool. They look like I've armed a bomb or something, you know? And I do appreciate that, Casio. Overall, first impressions, I really do like this watch. I'm annoyed I haven't bought it sooner and fingers crossed this doesn't fit too big on me. Quick spec check. Okay, so not including these crown guardy things, it's about a 45 millimeter diameter case. With those crown guards, we're talking 50 millimeters. So this is a big boy. It's 16 millimeters thick, 52-ish millimeters lug to lug, but it depends how much you can squash down that ribbed strap. The way these G-Shock straps are designed, how they're harnessed into the case. And the fact that the straps don't drop down like this DW290 means this watch is going to look much bigger than it probably is. Any other watch, whether it's mechanical or digital, with those sort of dimensions... I'll be out the door quicker than a whippet with a bum full of dynamite. But as it's a G-Shock, we can let it off. 
The one thing I am a little disappointed with, and it shows a bit of cost cutting, is the buckle on this strap. It's plastic, which I think is pretty lame. Of all the G-Shocks I've ever handled, it's always had a silver buckle. It wouldn't take that much effort to buy a stainless steel buckle and put it on, but it's a bit annoying. It's a typical G-Shock strap, ribbed at the start, and it's all about protection. If I was to drop this watch, ping off my wrist, as it hits the ground, instead of damaging the module, it bounces off the floor and protects that inner unit. Very over the top and over engineering, but that's what a G-Shock's all about. Like most Casios in my collection, this DW6900 is very easy to use. The screen is nice and clear. We have the time at the bottom of this LCD screen. We have the day of the week in the top left. And in the top right, we have the month and what day of the month it is. Scrolling through the modes, we first have an alarm. We have a countdown timer that can go up to 24 hours, as well as a stopwatch that can go up to 24 hours. Also, when you engage the stopwatch, that's when those triple dials have an absolute party and then it looks like you have just armed some sort of bomb there's also a split time function on here that's it that's all the functions in this watch and to be honest that's really all I need the only other thing is the backlight this bad boy does not disappoint unlike the 5610 that gives me a maximum of three seconds worth of light if I keep my finger on the big G button at the front I can have as much time with this backlight as I want if you're gonna have a big light button at the front of your watch you better make sure that the light is good don't press it too much for too often though. The battery life on these beauties is around two years, probably three, but if you're always pressing that middle button, expect the battery to die a little sooner. Hello. On my six and a half inch wrist, and yes, it does look a bit big, but I think it looks very good. It stretches well over my wrist size, but the diameter of the watch doesn't look too huge. I just love the colors of this watch, how it plays in the light, and it really does give me those 90s vibes. Paired up to my 5610, and the characteristics and the colors of the watches are very similar, so it's no wonder why I like this watch. It's the same too when I pair it with the DW290. Now the big question is, has this 6900 taken over the mantle as my favorite G-Shock of all time? No. As terms of proportions and size go, the 5610 is still the best G-Shock to buy. And it wears so much better for guys with small wrists. That does not mean I don't like it though. I've had this on for a couple of weeks. I'm a tennis coach by day and it has become one of my favorite watches to wear at work. Now I'm gonna see a lot of you in the chat below asking MWC, why didn't you get the Multiband 6 Solar model? The GW6900, there it is. Well, as you can see, the colors of it, just not for me. It looks too modern. Yes, I love the solar battery as I get in my 5610, but as aesthetics go, it just doesn't beat the original. Now the GW6900 is around 80 pounds. And if you like the case shape and appreciate solar and atomic clocking, then maybe that's the one for you. There were just too much pull for the nostalgia for me. This is the watch Tom Cruise wore in Mission Impossible 2. And to be able to get a watch that is still made in the same colors and the same everything, this is why I love Casio. Here it is, my wife's first impressions of the DW6900. Ha <laughs> No, it's ugly. It looks like a gas mask. Short and sweet. Today's shot comes from Scott underscore Seiko. And this is an amazing picture of the Casio Royale silver version hiding under a babbling brook on a beautiful NATO strap. Look at the legibility. We can still see the time, quarter to two. And what a watch to take with you on an adventure. Thanks for tagging me in, my friend. If you'd like to be on the next Casio Corner, all you gotta do, find me on Instagram here and tag me in on one of your Casio posts. Because who knows? Next time, the star of the show could, could be you. you. Thank you so much to everyone that has come to the end of the show. Remember, if you want bonus content, members only chat, come and be a certified member. Click the join button there or there, there, some, somewhere. The members are building and the MWC community is growing stronger by the day. From me, the Mad Watch Collector, I'll see you in a tick, 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 a tick. Every hour, every minute